Hello and welcome to Mocking Mayhem. This week we're doing Vinyl Tracks. Um, this is from the tank that I finished last week and um, it needed the tracks doing and I wasn't sure how I was going to do it in terms of the vinyl tracks because they can look a bit naff. But actually it worked out okay. So this video is a bit shorter than this week but it, it goes into a little bit more detail um, this week. I didn't have much time on the last video so it was better to do a separate video and um, I hope you get something from it. Thanks very much. Cheers! I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to tackle the, the vinyl tracks because they're um, they're not the easiest thing to paint and get them to look okay. But in the end, I just thought I'll try a simple system and, and just coat them first with a enamel paint, which is tougher because I worried that the Vallejo paint would crack and chip on the greasy surface, whereas a enamel would be a lot stronger. So I dug through my old enamel box and found a color that was a matte. And after a couple of minutes, or more than a couple of minutes, stirring and getting it to sort of be usable because the paint's been sat there for a few years, I realized that it was the wrong color. <laughs> so I had to look for another color which was more sandy. And I didn't check that the sand was a matte color. Although it wasn't gloss, it was quite, it had a certain shine to it anyway. And so I ended up painting the tracks as a base coat with that. In the end, it kind of worked. It didn't look too bad. At first I was thinking, oh my word, I mean, this could be totally disastrous. But actually, once I started putting the enamels on there, it looked okay. I literally painted everything with the enamel and then let that dry, which took a long time to dry, more than at least three, four days, I think. And it still smelled that kind of tacky sort of smell you get from paint that's drying. Once that was dry enough, I sprayed it with a clear coat to cover the top so that the acrylic could go on it. And then using the paints from the Vallejo um, Rust and Stain box set, I just looked at some photos of other tank tracks and kind of worked out a kind of style that I'd be happy with in terms of the color range. And I noticed that on the picture that I was looking at, it had quite orangey edges. So I thought that was probably the best place to start. So I took an orange stain paint and just applied that to the edges of the, the track. And then once I'd done that, I took a darker brown. I mean, you could use the specific colors from the Rust and Stains box, but you can use any color. Just look for the reference. You know, if you find a photo that you particularly like in terms of color and, and how much kind of dirt and whatever's on it, you know, it's staining as it were. You can mix up your color for that. So it's, it's not a kind of precise science. It's up to you where you go with it. But I happen to have these colors, so I just use them. I took a darker brown and blotched that out over the top of the original orange edge keeping the center the original enamel color here you can see how, it, how it's kind of almost like a cloud shadow just you know irregular patterns over the thing just to break up that kind of continuous one color look again apply it liberally you don't have to you know you'll be able to smudge it out anyway be careful how much don't try and destroy the detail because there isn't a colossal amount in terms of the um, vinyl tracks Because the tank was in a kind of dry, chalky look, I wanted that to go on the track. So I took um, deck tan, the famous deck tan, and applied that to the center of the track, mottling it into the track areas. It kind of mixed with a darker brown, so that kind of gave you another tone of color, which was great. You don't have to wait for the paints to dry. You can let them sort of mix a little bit and that give you even more colors. You could have actually dry brushed this and it would have looked just as good. But I think um, I, I wanted a little bit more of a, a kind of thicker clay kind of mud on, on the actual tracks. On the inside, I just painted on so that it was because it would, it would be smudged over by the wheels running around inside anyway. So I didn't have to be as blotchy with that, more of a smoother kind of paint flow. I mean, again, like I said, you could use any color here. It's just look at your reference, you know, and every kind of mud and surface and, you know, terrain is different. And sometimes it'll be more orange, sometimes it'll be more darker brown, or it can be drier. So it'll be a kind of a chalky kind of whiter color. It's all dependent on wherever the vehicle's operating. So, you know, you've got a kind of broad expanse of different colors to try and uh, find that quite exciting. And I, and I must admit with the vinyl tracks, I wasn't expecting a lot. I thought I'd maybe pass a, but actually it came out quite a bit better. And once they were glued onto the tank, they, they, they actually looked quite good. You know, they're never going to be the metal link tracks or plastic link even, but actually they don't look too bad if you paint them right. After that, I'd done the kind of chalky color, I took a dark gray and painted that over where the wheels would be running along it. Thinking about it now, I probably would have used silver in the middle there, but I was kind of rushing a little bit. 
in the end it didn't look too bad it kind of added a shadow to then that, that area maybe silver might have been too much or gunmetal might have been a bit naff but actually it, it worked okay I, you know i didn't have to go much more than that and then on the outside i used the same gray and i very lightly dry brushed the track kind of grip areas just you know quick brush over and it kind of just gives it a little bit more sort of shape and depth again you could do that silver if you wanted and i did think about that but it worked fine as it was so i just left it at that i was i was more than happy with the results anyway you can see all the colors there you know they're all mixed up so it's giving it quite a good spectrum of different colors and that's kind of what you want you don't think too monotonous because when you look at vehicles with their tracks there's every type of shade of brown and gray it gets going on there so the more you can get in there that kind of more it breaks up the eye in terms of the repetitive nature of the, how the track links work and uh, that sells the actual look finally once that had all been done i lightly misted over you don't have to do this but i'm lightly misted over with an airbrush the same color again deck tan just to give it a kind of a, a dusty overall look you could get away without that you don't have to do that but i think it works if you if you know it's worth spending a little bit more time on that bit you can see it's it's a very light light airbrush of, of the color and there we have it there's the tracks you know they don't look too bad i'm quite chuffed with them they're not the you know like i said they're not the metal tracks and they're not plastic link tracks but as far as vinyl go it doesn't look too bad and it works and for a cheap kit like this, and you're not going to spend a lot of money on tracks, it passes for fine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a smaller video, but it worked out well. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe below if you can. That'd be really, really great. And uh, till next week, thanks very much. Cheers. Ta-ra. Bye.